As we get more advanced in our geostatistics and applied GIS class, we've ventured into the subject of interpolation. Interpolation is the method by which we create a raster surface using known values to fill in unknown values. I've got an example here. I've got PM sites, and I'm going to uncheck the NC cities here, and we're looking at a really simple ArcGIS Pro project where we have PM sites. This is particulate matter. These are taken from different EPA sites throughout the state. I believe these were created in 2013, 2014, and they were created from uh, readings at these different locations over a certain period of time. But if I opened up the attribute value, you would see the area name and the measure and this PM value here. And I can basically sort these from highest to lowest. I could do a graduated simple map to show you how high these are. But what I want to do is I want to create a graduated surface. I want to create a, a surface map that shows where they are in Elizabeth City, where they are in Randolph County, where they are down in Brunswick County. So I want to create a surface that does that, and I want to use different interpolation routines in order to do that. The other, the other layer that I have here is cities. And so what I want to do is perhaps do different methods to see what the value is at Havelock versus Wilson versus Durham versus Sanford versus Asheboro versus Mint Hill versus Henderson versus these different cities. Now, I could do the point and click routines over and over and over, but we've got a tool here called Model Builder that allows us to automate the point and click methodologies. You notice a lot of times with my tutorials and the things that we do in class is that we follow kind of a set set of instructions. <clears throat> now, what if I did this set set of instructions once and then maybe change one of the input parameters over and over and over so that we don't have to remember what to do. We can refer to this model. We can export this model for use in a paper presentation so we can show people exactly what we did instead of listing these step by step or us having to remember what we did every single time. Now, when we go to the analysis tool to, uh, to, um, uh, button here, I have something called model builder. So I'm going to click on create model builder and you can see I've got a new model up here. Now, if I remember, what I want to do was I wanted to use these PM sites to create an interpolated surface. And then what I want to do is extract the values for each of these cities to determine what the PM value is at that particular city here, represented by the black triangles. And so it's just a couple of simple methods here that I want to do. And so I've got my model right here. Okay. Now there's a couple things I can do. I can do insert toolbox. Well, what I'm gonna do here is when I go to my model builder, I've got my different tools here that I can add. Now, first thing that I wanna do is I wanna go down to interpolation. A lot of times when I click on tools, and this is interactive, I can go to toolboxes. I'm gonna go to spatial analyst. And I have something here called interpolation. I've talked about these in some of my other videos. And so I'm just going to drag IDW over here. This stands for inverse distance weight. And if I were to right mouse click, double click on this, if we remember using this tool, the input features are going to be my PM sites. The Z value is going to be my average measure value since it's pretty much the only thing there. I'm going to click OK. And so I've created a a nice simple model here to do this. Move this over a little bit. But while I'm here under this model builder, I can click on environments. So I'm going to click on environments. I'm working in this thing called homework eight. My output coordinate system is going to be my map. My processing extent is going to be, I'm going to click on my NC counties because I want to go all the way to the NC counties because if I don't set a default, my processing extent is going to be to the extent of my input features. And I have something here called a mask. And my mask is going to be to my NC counties here. And if I were to right mouse click, uh, double click on here or open this particular tool, I can set up my environments here as well. And you can see my environments have been passed down to here and as well as my mask. 
Now the next thing I want to do is I want to extract the points to a raster. Now when I double click on this, this is going to be called IDW PM Site 6. So if I want to change the name of this, I'm going to call this so I recognize it underscore temp. Okay, so I know I'm looking for something like that. Okay. Next, I'm going to do a function called extract points. Now extract values to points. drag this over and you can see that it's in spatial analyst I didn't want to see exactly where it was in spatial analyst but extracts the values of a raster based on a set of point features and records the values at that particular point point. and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this tool now my input point features are going to be my cities and my input raster is going to be this IDW that I just created. If I were to click on environments, once again, you would see my processing extent and my mask have been set to what I set in the, uh, in the environments. I'm gonna click okay. And so this is a very, very simple model here. And I can change this as well. So I can change this, extract, and see cities. I'm just going to put TIM. Okay. Now I click on validate. I can look at my contents. And now I can insert a number of other things in here. I can insert utilities. I can insert uh, logical operators. I can insert iterations such as for a while. So this is really, really simple. So I'm going to click on validate. I'm going to click on Run. Okay. Now, what can we do here? Let's go to my database. Let's go to my map. Add my data. Let's see exactly what we did here. This is what we did. This is what we created. I'm going to uncheck everything else. I ran an IDW routine using these input parameters, using these PM sites as my input parameters. And then what I did from there was I extracted to these particular points. So if I right mouse click and open my attribute value, you can see at Boone it's 7.76, Hendersonville it's 9.74, uh, 9.84, if I really wanted to, I can select all, or I can copy this and put this into an individual fold, uh, put this into an individual database to do this. Now, if I really wanted to, watch what I can do. I can cut and paste this entire thing here, do the same thing, but now instead of running IDW, I can insert a different tool here. All right, let me try it with cragging or splining or some of the other things that we've talked about. Now when I'm done, I can export this model. I can export it to a Python file. I can send it to a Python window with all these particular commands, or I can export the actual graphic. And so if you're putting together a paper presentation, we can export this graphic. We can export this graphic. Now if I were to change this right here, if I were to delete this, and put in, put in my uh, cragging right here. I can do the same exact thing here. Now my input features are going to be my, you know, PM sites. Now, once again, I can run it. Same exact thing here. I have to pay a little more attention to the input parameters, but now 
I'm doing the same thing where I'm running IDW versus the cryogen so that now I can get the output for my results for the raster values for IDW and then generate a new data set for the predicted values at these same exact locations for cryogen versus splining versus uh, some of the other, um, uh, the nearest neighbor or whatever we want to do and start to compare these and run statistical analysis on these. So when we go back to our models, basically modeling automates our point and click technology so that we can see all the exact steps. Now you can see in blue, these are the feature classes that are going to uh, the input feature classes. In yellow, what we have are the actual techniques. And then these in green here are the generated surfaces as a result of our uh, generated surfaces as a result of our processing as a result of the, the processes that we run. And so you can see this extract values to point requires two input parameters, while IDW in this particular case only requires one. Let me see, I click this, I can get rid of this here. And then when we're done, we can export these. We can export these to a Python file, which would just be a, a big list of instructions that we can run. Or we have these nice graphics. And with these Python files, we can insert our own code into there using our own input parameters or whatever we want to pick. And so we can automate that, that custom file a little bit more. Or we could export to a graphic so that we can show this in a Word document or PowerPoint presentation.